Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our second webinar of this series. Um, today we'll be talking about the steps to get your esports program started. Um, to begin, we're going to launch a poll just to gauge some interest here. Um, so this poll is going to be, what was your first gaming console? I know we got a lot of different audiences here, so I was, I'm curious to see what everyone's first gaming console was. If you don't have any idea, if you were never a gamer, go ahead and put other in there. But I'll be launching that now and we'll, we'll see what everyone used. And just as everyone's inputting their, um, their consoles, um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the, the Q&A section. We'll be getting to those questions either through chat or like the first webinar, we'll have a live Q&A at the end. We encourage all questions um, and we hope to have a good answer for you guys. So we got 22 out of 27 people voted. Right now, we'll give a couple more seconds to see if anyone else wants to input theirs. This is interesting. 23. Okay, sorry everyone, that's, that's the cutoff for today. Um, so the number one, I'll go ahead and share this with you, is the Atari 2600. I personally don't even know what that is. So uh, The N64, that's my childhood gaming console that I grew up on. So that's interesting to see. NES is second. This is really cool. We'll have one more of these at the end. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens with it. <laughs> Way to go, old guys. All righty, so introductions here. Um, if you guys were at the last one, you may recognize me again. My name is Tanner Litchfield and I'm the eSports specialist here at Micro K-12. Um, so Micro K-12, we've been serving technology to schools um, for over 35 years, and I'm joined by Seth here. He's the market manager for um, Play Versus, and he was actually in education before his role, so this is a perfect webinar for him. He's a good resource for us, and he will be for you guys as well. Um, and going on, so the giveaway. I know you guys have seen this in the email. I wanted to clarify a little bit of this. So this is an awesome opportunity for all of you guys. Once we have 25 schools signed up for a Play Versus account that are also attending this webinar, we'll pick a random winner from that list to receive an annual Play Versus membership, which is valued at around $2,000. Um, it's, it's good for both seasons, uh, up to 25 students or, or teammates. But the, the question or what I wanted to bring up with the giveaway is a lot of you guys are, are district admins. A lot of you guys are in charge of um, the district in general. So if you want to push to your schools, your individual schools, um, that would be wonderful. So to get your high school signed up, that's what we want to do. All right, so getting started. Seth will be talking about how you can get your esports program started, um, why the play versus platform, and a deeper look inside of the play versus platform. And I, Tanner, will be talking about the esports solutions, suggested specs, and I'll be leading the, the question and answer, and, and Seth will be helping me with those questions as well. So now I'll turn the time over to Seth and he will dive deeper into this. Hey everyone, um, wanted to say uh, one quick thank you just because I know from you know, time and education that this time of year is, is really hectic and especially given the current circumstance, you know, time is, is a commodity. So really appreciate all you guys and gals jumping in here and, and wanting to learn a little bit more about esports. Um, and, and I'm super stoked to, to kind of share some of my experiences from, uh, from both sides of the equation. So um, we're going to start off with why uh, now is actually a really great time uh, to get started. So 
Um, we're we're going to kind of touch on, uh, you know, it, it being safe and, and able to operate uh, in that socially distant climate. Uh, that we live in and and you know that we might still be in you know if if things don't change looking to the fall um, and kind of from an, an overhead perspective of, of why esports is affordable um, you know in comparison to uh, to traditional sports so um, what's great about esports is that uh, obviously uh, it is not a, a contact sport um, you're going to actually see a lot of students that are going to be coming from all walks of life. So those students that are, you know, intrinsically motivated to step out onto that field or that court, um, you're also going to see students that um, have never participated within the school. Um, what's really interesting is kind of a, a common theme, you know, from the students in the, the program is that the, the sense of community is, is really what what they're they're hungry for and and looking for and um you know most of them this is their first foray in into that social setting so um you know competing from school under the supervision of a coach uh, allows you the educators to kind of set that narrative of what's appropriate behavior what's being a good digital citizen um and and all of that to, to make sure that that program is is someplace that uh, they want to be um, and on the affordable side, um, you know, if, if any of the, the district administrators on the, the webinar today know, you know, traditional sports typically have a very large overhead with, you know, uh, an example football, you know, purchasing the field, keeping it maintained and, and upgrading it over time. Um, you know, esports can operate within the school already using the existing infrastructure that you guys have available to you. Um, and you're going to be able to, um, you know, upgrade that once you, you've got that community built out and, and you start to see some administrative support. Um, let's kind of talk about some of the student participation um, and, and what, what's really motivating the students and what they're saying uh, about esports and, and play versus. So, like we already talked about, it's going to reach a, a large spectrum of students. Um, and what's great is that, you know, with our partnerships with the NFHS and the local state athletic associations, we're able to tie in a lot of the eligibility, um, you know, academic eligibility and other, you know, traits uh, that exist for traditional sports into the esports realm. Um, but just a few of the stats that we're looking at here, we, we did some, some early data collection around what the students were saying, where they came from, and, and what they really liked about the platform. And there's uh, some, some key takeaways here. So uh, in season zero, our pilot season, 41% of our player base said that this is the first time that they've ever participated in any sport or activity within the school. Um, and as you folks know, a, an engaged student in their in their school community is going to be motivated to perform uh, at a higher standard in the classroom. Um, and 83% said that they found the community that they could connect to. Uh, and I think this is is really what kind of motivated me as as a coach to to not only be working, you know, a, a full time 40 hour a week job as the IT director at the school, but to put in more hours was because um, I was one of those kids that was really not engaged in the school and, and would definitely have benefited um, from finding that community. Um, and, and that's a, a massive kind of overarching theme that, you know, in, in season since season zero, um, that the, the students sometimes they write in or parents and, and educators will write in and say that, you know, their, their student found a, a, a group of friends that they would have never found otherwise. Um, Another thing here is that 50% planned on applying for an esports scholarship. Uh, when I was coaching at, at our program, mind you, we weren't uh, the, the highest ranked program in, in the state, but uh, we had college recruiters drive hours just to come talk to our students uh, about college and, and those scholarship opportunities. And um, I watched the previous webinar and there was some discussion uh, about you know that barrier for entry being low and that is absolutely true uh, a lot of programs are really looking to kind of build out uh, you know their their program and, and get some seats filled to, to really grow it so um, and we're going to kind of talk about uh, you know scholarships college and and career opportunities um, to touch on that you know a little bit more in depth later but one thing that I, I really wanted to touch on is that you know a lot of these students uh, have actually never even played the the games before so 
Um, you know, they're doing something in an environment that they might not have, have been comfortable with in the first place, you know, branching out, um, but they're also doing something that they've never done before. Uh, so I think that that really kind of speaks to the need um, and the motivation uh, that is behind these players. Um, and I kind of wanted to touch on this, this student quote here because I think it's really profound. Um, you know, what they're saying is, is that their, their coach was, was there to not only help them, you know, perform at a high level in game, but to also be sportsmanlike and, and to be good opponents and, and tell the, you know, the opponents to, to, you know, good luck, have fun and, and to just enjoy their time and, and really that they found kind of a family within the school. And I think that's really moving. And, and that's ultimately what, what motivated me to step away from my small community um, to kind of do this on a national scale. And, and I really, really enjoy getting to, to work alongside uh, a lot of other really passionate educators that, that want to do the same thing. Um, so let's kind of compound on that and, and talk about, you know, future pathways. Uh, you know, esports can can obviously open up uh, pathways for scholarships uh, that, that maybe previously students weren't thinking about or, you know, can, can kind of steer them in that direction for a career path. Uh, if you go to Riot Games' website and, and go to the careers page, uh, you can, can scroll and scroll and scroll, and there's all these different disciplines. And, and what's really unique is that, you know, 30 or 40 years ago, if, if you asked a student, you know, what do you want to be when, when you grow up? You know, maybe, maybe they said, uh, I want to be the president, or I want to be an astronaut, or, you know, whatever the case may be. If you talk to kids now and ask them, what do you want to do? Most of them will say something like, oh, I want to be a, a, a professional YouTuber. Oh, I want to be a, a Twitch streamer. And, you know, I'm really passionate about gaming. So what's really the, a key takeaway, you know, looking at that Riot Games uh, careers page is that there's disciplines that aren't necessarily game design. You know, you've got engineers that are writing code. You've got analysts that are analyzing data. You've got live event production and, and IT and and while those are all real, real world uh, careers and, and abilities, um, you can tie those into gaming and really kind of make that connection to kind of steer the students um, down that path and make it a tangible career path for them. Um, so I think it's, it's important to, to make a note that, you know, gaming and esports, yes, they're tangentially related, but they're not the same thing. You know, gaming is that, that solitary pastime. Um, that you might do as a hobby, whereas esports is that collaborative team environment where you're using all of those same, uh, you know, life skills that you're learning on on a on a field. You know, that critical thinking, strategy, split second decision making, um, and it's tying it into into an, an executable uh, skill set for the students. So um, it's really equipping them for success in the future. Um, so one thing kind of worth mentioning is the, 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 the climate that we live in obviously right now is, is very different than one, um, you know, when we started our season uh, for the spring. So uh, we, we understand that, you know, isolation has, has been really difficult, um, especially for students and, and distance learning. Um, so we did actually wind up canceling our season. Uh, but we decided that we, we wanted to still provide a way for schools that were interested uh, in getting started with esports or maybe continuing their program and, and keeping that community connected. Um, you know, they could use the scrimmage feature to, to do that. So, you know, what is the scrimmage feature on, on the Play Versus platform? It's, it's effectively the same game or match day experience that you would get uh, in the league. Um, it's just that you as the coach or the, the sponsor of the program will, will assist in that matchmaking. We won't do that for you. Um, but what this provides to the players and the coaches is that they will get that same match day experience so that they can continue to improve those life skills that we're talking about. Um, and they'll be able to do that with other like-minded schools. So, you know, instead of your students playing games at home like they're probably doing right now as we speak, um, this allows you guys to put them in that, you know, that closed environment with an adult that's there to, to help supervise remotely, obviously, um, and, and have a, a similar uh, opponent that's, that's, you know, has the same goals. So um, it is free all summer long. There is absolutely zero commitment or, or payment required. Um, and how you can get involved in that is, is just signing up on the Play Versus website inviting your students if you, you've already got that core group, or if you have a direct line of communication, you can send out the invite link to the, to the students. 
um, and they can go ahead and, and jump on the platform and, and test it out for free and stay connected um, over summer. So uh, if you guys have any questions about that, my contact information is going to be in the end of the webinar. Do not hesitate to, to reach out, but um, I think it's a great way for everyone to kind of uh, move forward with some of the action items we're going to talk about um, in still moving your program forward. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about why play versus and kind of what makes us different. So, um, you know, game integration is, is kind of a, a fancy, a fancy words and, and stuff like that. So I'm going to do my best to, to kind of equivalent it here. So, um, you know, uh, let, let's, let's look at a game like League of Legends. So League of Legends is a free to play game, meaning it doesn't cost anything to, to download and, and jump right in. But there's, there's champions or characters in the game that cost either time or real life money uh, to be able to utilize and, and, and play with. So, um, you know, obviously in education, accessibility, inclusion and equity are, are pillars of, of what we do as educators. Um, and these game integrations and the partnerships uh, with the, the developers allow us to carry over those themes into the, into the esports space. So um, that champion unlock for, for League of Legends evens the playing field as much as humanly possible so that your veteran players and your novice players have that same toolkit available to them. Um, and the only differentiator at the end of the day is going to be a team or player's experience or skill. Um, and the game integrations allow us to extract those stats um, from those matches to then programmatically run the schedule and find uh, an opponent that is as equal to skill as possible to your teams. Um, so we want to try to get away from those one-sided smashes where, you know, one team is, is not learning anything and the other team is, is not having a, a good experience. That's not to say that it doesn't happen from time to time. Um, but this integration allows us to move away from that um, as much as possible. Um, we've already talked about Champion Unlock, and that would fall uh, under a premium feature, um, but uh, that, that also extends to other titles in the lineup. So for a game like Rocket League, uh, it costs $20 to, to download and, and purchase that game just to play it. Uh, but if a player doesn't already own that game, um, we will give them a free copy to utilize uh, throughout the season. Um, and again, that extends to the scrimmage feature, so you guys can take part in that um, over summer. But uh, I wanted to really kind of dive into the NFHS and State Athletic Association partnerships um, because I think they're equally important. So um, the NFHS, as you, you folks already know, is, is the parent company to all of these state athletic associations uh, throughout the country. Um, and the partnership through NFHS allows us to go ahead and get that varsity sport designation for esports. Um, and this will allow to um, have those, those eligibility requirements um, and, and for those esports players to be recognized at the same level um, as those football or baseball or traditional sports athletes, um, you know, physicality aside that, that, you know, just the same as chess is, is really kind of respected for the strategy and, and skill. Esports is, is, is kind of put on that same you know, pedestal because it's made of the same uh, formula. But uh, the state athletic associations, we're currently partnered with 21 um, and have plans to, to partner with uh, all the, the state athletic associations within the state. Um, that means ultimately that coaches are, are you know, recognized as actual coaches, just the same as you know, your colleagues within the school that coach traditional sports. Um, my job is to obviously help schools, uh, you know, navigate and create their programs, but also to help districts, you know, allocate those funds for, for stipends and, and to get those coaches through those same um, requirements and such that, that, that uh, traditional coaches um, are held to. So. So let's kind of dive into some of the season structure and, and how we calibrate that matchmaking. Um, so play versus we have two seasons in a calendar school year, fall and spring. They are completely self-contained with the pre, regular and post season. Um, the preseason is typically uh, where you're gonna have your first foray into esports uh, on on school grounds. I will tell you that uh, your your object in the preseason is to break everything, um, as many things as you can as possible. Reason being is because this doesn't count against your regular season standing. So this is just a sandbox environment for you folks to try out the platform, get the kiddos 
um, you know, to understand how to get in and, and work out all those kinks. Obviously, uh, school networks are not intended to, to play games. So I promise you, you'll probably have a couple hiccups, but we are here to help. Um, and I'm sure Michael K-12 can too. Um, but the regular season um, is going to run through mid-October to mi uh, mid-December. Uh, we hope to conclude um, all of the, the playoff uh, matches up until the finals before holiday break. That way, everyone can focus on spending time with their family um, and, and enjoy that time off over the break. But once we get back uh, in January, we'll have that, that championship event. Um, we're really excited about these events, and and typically we've we've hosted LAN events. So I actually hosted the state championship in my state. So it was great to 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 put faces to the names behind um, the screen. So so the kiddos really enjoyed that. Um, but that experience again is in fall and spring. All titles are available all year round, so kiddos don't have to choose between traditional sports and and their favorite game. But um, those integrations we talked about uh, in the last couple slides, uh, again, are helping us calibrate that matchmaking through what we call hybrid Swiss. Um, so in League of Legends, excuse me, it's a, it's a series of two games against one singular opponent. Um, there's three possible outcomes for those matches, win, lose, or draw. Um, those will help us calibrate who to, to, to put into the next uh, schedule block which we do run um, in three week segments. You can scout out opponents, see what they're, what they're fielding, um, you know, formulate your strategies or even challenge them to a scrimmage uh, if you want or, or scrimmage someone you know, from other states. So um, I think that's a really great way to, to level up the coaching and, and take that program to the next level. Um, each um, game is gonna have its own unique match day. Uh, so currently Tuesdays is League of Legends, uh, Thursdays is Rocket League and Smite. Uh, Fortnite will be joining the lineup in the the fall, and that'll probably be on Wednesday. We'll talk more about games in a second. But um, one really, really important note here is that last bullet point, and that's the the required verified coach. So um, some of you folks may be, you know, on on the webinar here thinking, well, I I don't have any game experience, or I haven't touched a a console <laughs> since the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Uh, shout out to you guys, but. Um, what we're really looking for is, is someone who is, is passionate uh, about cultivating that program and being that positive adult role model. Um, obviously, gaming experience is, is something that helps, um, and we're working on, on giving those coaches ways to level up through uh, what we're, we're building. is called the, the Play Versus Coach Academy. Um, but again, we're looking for someone who is a verified staff member or school volunteer um, that's willing to host those matches at school um, or a centralized location if for some reason the school's infrastructure cannot support. Um, so let's kind of dive into some of the asks. Um, so we've got a, a few kind of layers here and, and we'll kind of jump through some of these and then the next slide we'll talk about some action items. But uh, on the school side, so the administrators, what we're really looking for um, is, is support for the team. So, you know, giving that approval, sending that coach on the path to, to building the program, um, as well as getting that IT to, to jump in and, and help out. And full disclosure, I'm sure we've got some IT folks on the call here. We're all cut from the same cloth. You say games, our ears perk up, and, and I'm sure that we'll be able to jump in and help out. Um, but really the most important thing is just finding that space and, and equipment within the school um, for, for school or for the program to, to operate on a match day. Um, coaches, what we're looking for is, is someone that's willing to be that liaison between play versus and the opposing team. Uh, interactions are always going to be coach to coach or coach to play versus. Um, you're not going to be talking to students in the depths of the internet, you know, in, in some random discord. Um, you can see the other uh, opposing coaches contact information in the schedule. Um, you can actually see their their own discord that so you can DM them directly. Um, but we want to try to make sure that it's that closed in system that we respect student data privacy. Um, because again, we're former educators, we understand that that is vital. Um, but you're just going to be there to, to manage that roster and the players, make sure that they're, they're behaving appropriately and representing the school, um, just the same as you would expect the football or other teams to do. Um, and, and again, you, you need to be on site for those practices and matches once we do return to normal um, in the future. 
On the play versus side, we manage uh, all the overhead of the league um, from enforcing the rules, running the schedule, and supporting and onboarding coaches. Um, so that's kind of what we provide to all layers of, of the, the, the eSports program at the school. But uh, on the player side, we, we ask for, you know, scholastic excellence, that they're keeping their grades up, they're not getting referrals or behavior reports, um, you know, at school or, or in the league itself. Um, and that's going to fall under that digital citizenship. Um, and obviously, we want to see their best effort um, because we, we believe that, we, you know, in order to legitimize eSports, not only do you know the schools and the coaches need to take it seriously, but the players do um, as well. And and again, I'm going to lean on what I said uh, previously about you know gaming and esports are are not exactly the same thing. Um, so let's kind of dive a little bit deeper into some of those those next steps. So. Um, on the planning side, you know, hopefully some of the admins or coaches in here um, have kind of maybe already kind of cased out a space or, you know, maybe can connect and, and kind of see if maybe a lab can be repurposed or maybe Micro K-12 can help you guys with the equipment. Um, or maybe you're an administrator and you don't have a coach yet. Um, you know, sending out that, that information to the school that, hey, this is something we want to explore, um, you know, and are there any staff members out there that are willing to support that? On the connect side, so uh, you're going to want to connect with the IT department, see what their stakeholders um, feel about it, and, and can this operate, you know, on the school network domain. Um, speaking of domain, we have the whitelists and uh, and micro, or excuse me, um, um, minimum respect, minimum specs. What are words uh, to be able to play those games at school and, and get those whitelists so they can be played. Um, again, you know, you're going to have to download those games on the machines, benchmark them, test them. Feel free to reach out to us or Micro K12 for support on that front. Um, and then on the building side, you know, you're going to want to make sure that once you've got that core group, you get them signed up onto the Play Versus website, you start building those teams and, and get in and play. Again, I think right now is a really great time um, to kind of have a, that low risk trial or demo of, of the platform and, and kind of see what it's all about. Um, so now we're going to kind of dive into a look at some of the Play Versus platform features and, and what that looks like and what you can do uh, on the platform itself. Um, so what we're looking at right now is, is the coach dashboard. You can see on that, most, uh, that leftmost picture um, and the, the left side there, there's, there's a few different tabs. So you're going to be able to manage your teams and players and the rosters and esports in which they play. Uh, you can pull up your schedule and look at standings in the league and your stats and stuff like that. Um, the scrimmage feature is, is also within that, and you can uh, search for other opponents and be able to, to scout them out and, and issue that, that scrimmage challenge. But on the right side here, we're kind of looking at uh, what the management of the roster looks like. So you can look at your starting members, your subs. Um, it's worth mentioning that you can have multiple teams at your school, um, and subs can fill in, in any of that, uh, that same eSport title. So League of Legends subs to League of Legends uh, you know, teams. Um, here's a, a look at the standings. Again, these are reinforced by that, uh, that game integration and those stats. You'll be able to look at uh, a, a very robust and substantial um, kind of molecular view of, of their performance week over week um, and kind of scout out, you know, who you guys think you might see in the playoffs um, and, and maybe identify some rivals. Um, this is where I spent most of my time um, on the platform. I would, I would have our help desk. Uh, open in one tab and the standings in the other just to, to keep an eye on things. Um, but here's what the, the, the team players and stats uh, look like. So you can see on the left picture here, you've got what champions the opposing team played, what they banned, you know, what objectives they took and, you know, what their income looks like, what their eliminations are. And you can identify um, some, some, some MVPs or, or target your bands at certain folks um, or, you know, see who's scoring the most goals in, in Rocket League, um, you know, and, and that's represented in those player stats. So, um, again, I would recommend signing up on the Play Versus website, poking around and, and seeing what it's like. Um, esports is really unique in that it's very data driven. Um, and, and we want to try to give the kiddos as, as much as possible for them to be self-starting and, and really take on that leadership role to, to do all the scouting and, and strategy. So, um, so that's kind of a, a glimpse and, and some, some action items for, for folks. Um, I'm actually going to throw it back to Tanner. He's going to kind of walk through what Micro K-12 is, is able to support um, and help you guys in, in building out your program. 
appreciate you you guys uh, listening to, to me ramble on and, and hopefully this answered some questions. So take it away, Tanner. Hey, Tanner, you're, uh, you're muted, by the way. Okay, so there we go. Can you guys hear me now? Yep, loud and clear. Perfect. All righty, so thank you, Seth, for all that good information. Um, I want to make sure before I continue too far, I want to make sure that we get esports running in, in Washington, Idaho, Montana, Oregon. And I want to make sure that Micro can help you help this region in that matter. And so to do that, I know we have a lot of decision makers um, district wide, school wide. So if you guys are a district admin, if you're an athletic director um, in the district in general, um, we wanna make sure that the high school level is, is on board as well, especially for the next webinar. Um, we'll be talking about local school districts and how they have developed their program. So that would be a perfect opportunity to invite um, the school, school-wide, so your high schools, to join that to see how local schools have developed their programs. So that'd be an awesome opportunity also to get them to sign up for the Play Versus account would be awesome to get them on board. So now that we've gone over that, how can Micro K-12 help in your journey um, so what we offer, we offer all the esports hardware and furniture you will need at great prices. We offer engraving and delivery. And most importantly, we offer a helping hand for you to build an esports program. This is planning consulting. If you guys were at the last webinar, we talked about that as well. Um, so we want to make sure this is not as overwhelming as it can be. There's a lot that goes into this. It's an unfamiliar scene and we wanna help um, you all in that. So Micro K-12, we've developed a starter bundle starting at $8.99. This is only while supplies last. We have a lot more bundles to help with any needs that you all may have. Um, there's different specs for each game, League of Legends, Rocket League, here's two examples showing them um, compared side by side. Each game has different requirements, which means different hardware requirements as well. And we can make sure to help you all with that. Funding. So funding, STEM grants are an awesome opportunity to get funding for an esports program. This is what a lot of programs have done across the nation. Um, there's fundraisers. Fund My Team is a website that helps you run a fundraiser campaign. Um, corporate sponsorships, talking to your local businesses about it to help them sponsor an esports program. That's um, a route that people have seen success in as well. And there's so many other ways to get creative and with Seth's background, I want to make sure that he expounds on this. So Seth, if you could expound on this, that would be awesome. Yeah, sure. So I think um, uh, esports is, is really great in that you can get really kind of creative about, you know, what, what you guys can do for, for fundraising. So to give a couple examples of, of what we did uh, at, at my school was, um, you know, obviously the Play Versus Library is, it, it doesn't include every title out there. Um, but we, we obviously still had some passionate students, um, you know, for, for some of the games uh, out there. So we use those to, to, to create tournaments uh, at school on the weekend. This obviously, you know, keeps kiddos from, from getting into trouble over the weekend. But um, it also kind of gives them a way to not only raise funds for the program, but get some good life skills and live event management. Maybe they are interested in shoutcasting and, and that production side of things. Maybe they even create music. 
Um, they can, you know, all, all exercise what they're passionate about um, in that esports community in the school um, and, and use those titles to help raise that funding. Um, you know, you, you might have the, the football or basketball team and, and they have without a doubt used every possible fundraiser under the sun for, you know, the last umpteen years. But what you could do to get creative is, is maybe host a, a Madden tournament. Um, for the community, you know, in partnership with the football team and, and split those funds, or maybe you've, you've got a, a kiddo on your team where their parent is a, is a business owner within the community and, and you guys could give them some uh, exposure on, on your, your Twitch page or, or, you know, your YouTube channel, whatever the case is. So skies, it's absolutely the limit. And, and the only limiter is, is how you guys and gals are, are creative in, in doing um, that fundraising. Um, and if you guys come up with anything uh, unique, please send it my way. I'm, I'm always looking to, to see what other, you know, passionate folks out there are, are doing to, to go esports. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Seth. And as well, Jackson, can you send off the registration link for the third and fourth webinar as well? This will help when you, when you are sending it to the high schools whether it be the athletic director, teachers, you can send the, the play versus sign up link as well as the third and fourth registration link. So now we will be going on to the question and answer, the q and I will be hosting this, trying to moderate it so it's all smooth. Seth will be here to answer questions as well. Um, as I'm answering questions, I want to make sure you guys have our contact information. So there it is right there. Um, and now let's get to the questions. So will play versus be available to middle schools at some point? Seth, do you want to dive into this? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great question. Um, so, so obviously student data privacy is 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 paramount in, in the education space um, and and we do our best to adhere to that uh, specifically um, a lot of regulations and guidelines around copa um, which which ultimately means that the the platform is available to students that are ages 13 years and up um, you know if if we we need to get those middle school kiddos involved um, we we obviously have to do some retooling um, to, to the registration and, and what data is, is available as, as we want to make sure that, that we respect, um, you know, what information is, is facing, um, you know, other, other students. But I think also, too, something to mention is, is that, yes, we, we do want to expand to, to middle school in the future. And we also want to make sure that those titles uh, that we, we offer um, align with, with that age group and, and are appropriate. Um, so, so as you see more of those titles join, um, I imagine that, that that timeline will, will kind of connect. Awesome. The next question that we have is, are you partnered play versus with WIAA, the Washington State Interscholastic Athletic Association? We have another question here as well. Um, so two questions came in about that. Seth, you want to expound on that? Yep, it's a great question. So um, at this time, we we are not. Um, we do have plans of of making those partnerships with all state athletic associations in in all fifty states, um, as well as to expand to to other countries. But um, we are uh, available in all fifty states uh, as as our club offering. So there's there's two. Uh, leagues uh, that, that we offer and, and I'll kind of expand on that. So um, let's, let's use the WIA as an example. So all member schools within that association are going to be contained within that Washington State League and any non-member schools will get placed into a time zone based uh, club league. Um, so currently that would mean that all schools within Washington State fall in that club league at which point, once we do formalize a partnership with that association, all those schools get extracted out of the time zone league and put into that, that member contained league. Um, but, but yes, uh, it is available to all 50 states. And, and the, the experience is the same 
The only difference is, is that you are not playing for a state championship title or that member associated uh, championship title. So, so that's kind of the, the difference. And, and I don't want anyone to feel dissuaded because uh, we've got a lot of, of schools that started out in the club league um, and were able to hit the ground running and, and kind of get a leg up on the competition once we partnered with that state association. But that's a great question. Awesome. The next question we have is Super Smash Bros and the Switch still relevant? That seems to be what my CTE director is leaning toward because two other schools are using it and held local competition with each other. I could and would like to persuade him otherwise. My students are more interested in Xbox with Rocket League, Fortnite, and COD, which stands for Call of Duty. Should we even look at console or should we be looking at gaming computers? Um, I, I think that's a really interesting question. Um, you know, I'll, I'll use Rocket League as an example. So, so Rocket League, you know, we use Steam to, to, to play Rocket League on our platform. Um, that ultimately means that, that it's going to be played on, on a PC. Um, you know, and, and the, the majority of the Rocket League player base is, in fact, console. So, um, you know, over the summer with kiddos having to, to stay at home and, and play from home, that means that they they likely are not playing on on that computer. So, uh, you know, looking forward to the future, we we do have have plans to support consoles. Um, you know, in terms of of Smash and and the Switch, you know, I, I would say Smash is is without a doubt one of the the most popular esports uh, out there, and and the community is super super passionate. Um, and you know, we we actually we love Smash. We we when we could be at the office, played it uh, almost every day in, in a little kind of internal league. So um, yes, I think Smash is relevant. I think the Switch is relevant. Um, and and we, we want to support um, as many ways to play as possible. Uh, but from a technical aspect, we, we do uh, want to make sure that the, the quality standards are, are up to our specifications. Um, so, so we'll, we'll want to make sure we're doing that the right way. Um, Awesome, awesome question. Awesome. The next question, one barrier to onboarding esports in high school as a varsity sports is the assumption this will be male driven. Thought on Title IX and gender, gender equality. This is an awesome question. Before I let Seth dive into it more, my experience, I've seen a lot male, female involved in, in esports. In fact, for our fourth webinar, um, Charlie Morrow is actually the head coach of a college. Um, she's a female, and she is the head coach of the eSports team in Peninsula College, and she does really well. I'm sure she's a huge adv advocate about that. Hopefully, she'll talk about that in the fourth webinar. Um, Seth, what do you feel about Title IX and the gender equality with eSports? Yeah, that's uh, it's it's a really important topic to touch on. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of, of viewpoints that you know gaming and, and esports specifically is is a male dominated uh, industry, and and I think what not only play versus but you know the educator educators you know in this call and and throughout the country are in a really unique position in that we kind of are at the grassroots level or or the that foundational level to where we can reprogram. Um, you know, an, an entire industry. Um, so, you know, back home, my sister uh, would still be on on my team uh, back home, uh, you know, if, if we were still competing. Um, but I think what's important is that females are, are without a doubt out there. Um, I think in order to combat the, the, the kind of discrepancy between male and female inclusion, is to create a space that those females feel uh, welcome and supported. Um, you know, I, I met my my better half through through esports. Um, she, funny enough, lives uh, up in Vancouver, uh, right across the border. Um, and and I've met a ton of, of really great female friends through through gaming. And and I think uh, a lot of them share a lot of that same struggle and that. They don't really feel that it's been uh, an inclusive or supportive space. So um, I think uh, I like to challenge everyone I can to, to combat that and, and make their, their program 
uh, inclusive. So robotics is a fantastic example. You know, there are some schools that maybe they have a girls in coding or maybe they have a, a girls robotics team or, or a, a girls meet, you know, for, for other uh, activities. So I think I'd like to see some, some parallels to that and, and we definitely want to support it. Um, you know, there's a few all girls schools here locally in California that um, we we're hoping to be able to promote and, and kind of share their story uh, you know, in, in gaming and esports to let other girls out there know that, that they can be a part of that and, and be promoted and, and have a safe space to participate. Awesome. Yeah. And I think the schools can help promote that equality as well, um, which would be awesome. So the next question is how many stations minimum are needed to compete? So Bob, there's a lot of different games, obviously. We've seen that four, four stations is pretty common to get started. Um, but obviously some games can be 1v1, 2v2. Seth, what have you seen common as um, the minimum stations to compete in? Yeah, so each game, like Tanner alluded to, is going to have its own unique roster requirements. Um, so League of Legends is, is the most popular esport in the world. It's a five on five. So that means, you know, at a bare minimum, you'll need five capable machines uh, to be able to, to compete. But um, we find that the, the average size program currently across the, the, the nation is, is 15 players. So that ultimately means 15 split amongst those, those teams. Currently, we ask that players opt into one eSport title of their choosing. In the future, that may change. But, um, you know, one thing worth mentioning is that uh, Tanner kind of talked about the annual pass and how you get 25 seats. Um, it's 25 seats per season for a total of 50 seats for the year. And you're probably thinking, well, 15 and, and 50, Seth, that, that math doesn't jive. So, um, you know, as we add more titles to the lineup, uh, we expect that that average program size to grow. Um, so one of the titles that we're adding for the fall uh, is, is, in my opinion, going to double the size of, of most programs. So, um, you know, kind of, of is, is going to be up to you. Obviously, I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, want you to turn anyone away, but please don't feel like, you know, you, you have to be overwhelmed and, and, and stuff like that. Um, but hopefully those numbers will kind of help you, uh, you know, navigate and, and plan your, your logistics. Awesome. Okay, the next question, the season pass you mentioned for students, is that season pass for all four of your supported games or is it per game, one for Rocket League, one for League of Legends, et cetera? Yeah, so... Um, Kind of how, how it works is, is, I'll use my school for example. So uh, all of the, the titles in the lineup were available to, to our school, um, but, but the students had to opt into one title. So uh, based on our demographic, League of Legends and Rocket League were the two games um, that, that we had to, to opt into. I had one student who uh, they, they really were passionate about, you know, playing League of Legends, they had aspirations to play in, in college and, and professional, um, and, and they also happen to be Diamond and, and Rocket League, but um, we, we do ask that students opt into one eSports um, for a few reasons. So one, um, you know, we, we, we want to try to mirror traditional sports, you know, in, in that a, a coach is going to want to ask that player to, to kind of dedicate their time uh, to one specific craft. Um, but also we want to make sure that the students, um, you know, they're probably playing games at home and, and their spare time as well as esports. So they need to balance any, any academic requirements as well as maybe any, any jobs that they might have. So, um, you know, we're, we're still toying with the idea of, of opening that up to, to all the titles or, or multiple titles. But um, again, we want to make sure that whatever decision we land on is, is a good player experience. Um, so, so once we do decide, you know, to do that, we obviously will share that uh, with, with the community. Awesome. Uh, we have a few minutes here, a few more questions as well. Hopefully we'll wrap up in due time. Um, the next question, if you don't get any grants, what is the typical cost for starting a program, assuming none of your current computers can be modified? 
and I think I can handle this one, Seth. You can expound on it if you want, but um, obviously it depends how many students are interested, how big you want your lab to be, how much you can handle. Right now with our bundles, talking just about hardware, um, we had that bundle starting at $8.99. That's pretty beginner. Um, the good, which I would recommend bundles are around $1,200, um, which would be great for all games that your students would want to play. Um, so depending what game, depending how many students, but those are kind of what our bundles are looking like. Seth, do you want to expound on that? Yeah, yeah. So um, for our specific program, we were, we were fortunate enough to have a project lead the way um, lab at the school that, that we were able to utilize um, to, to kind of get us started. Um, we, we kind of air quotes roughed it that first season. Um, and we, we had a, a, a review of, of what the season was like and, and what would have made a, a better experience. And the, uh, the resounding response was, is we need better monitors. So, um, you know, we, we made sure to, to invest in some good gaming monitors. Um, we, we actually worked alongside, um, the technology department to build out a, a streaming computer to be able to promote the program. Uh, and that one also doubled as a, a VR uh, computer. Uh, we brought the superintendent into the building and he went on a tour of the White House and never left the building. <laughs> um, and I'll never forget, he took off his headset and he looks over at me and he's like, what's it going to cost to get 20 of these in every, every school in the district? So um, you know, the, the, the options are, are limitless. There's obviously different spectrums, you know, good, better, best. Um, I would recommend going with that, that better, uh, you know, purchase like Tanner was talking about just because, um, it's going to help you be future proof. And, and as more titles join the lineup and, and as time goes on, you're going to get a, as much bang for your buck, uh, in, in that. So, um, I think Micro K-12 is, is more than capable of, of handling some of that consultation and, and kind of looking at what you guys have and, and what makes sense as far as an upgrade uh, to, to make sure that the students have a good experience. Awesome. Okay, the last question for the webinar. Um, starting a team in high school, how many students did you start with? How many systems? that this is for Seth I'm guessing because he he started that team so Seth yes yeah, so <laughs> our story was a was was a little bit wonky uh when I took my my job as an IT director at the high school if you told me I would have been interacted with students I probably would have laughed you out of the room I expected to be in in dusty server rack rooms and and that was that was the end of it but um we decided for our first season we kind of just wanted to test the waters um, kind of find out what this was all about. Um, and, and so we started out with, with one team. Um, and then after that, you know, once, once the school community kind of figured out that, Hey, our, our school has an esports program and who, who to thunk the coach, he's, he's, he's all right. <laughs> um, we, we had, uh, 50, uh, excuse me, 17 players the, the following season. So, uh, we tripled the size of our program. Um, so it, it really is going to depend on what your your demographic is at the school. You know, if if you've got those players that are really motivated for for one game over the other, and, and how many there are, um, you know, I, I'd recommend to to maybe do you know some type of uh, uh, an interest meeting or or something along those lines just to kind of gauge what's out there. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the question is, is, well, what is an esports tryout? What is an esports practice? You know, I don't know. I didn't even know that whenever I started. Um, so we actually have a bunch of resources that will help uh, you folks kind of navigate that and, and figure out what, what makes sense for your, your program in school. So, and, and please don't hesitate to reach out to, to myself. You know, it's, it's my job to, to help you navigate that and, and uh, provide any, any guidance from, from both sides of the equation. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for attending this webinar. Um, lastly, before you guys go, the third and fourth webinar will be awesome. We'll be talking about the local schools and how they've developed a program and also the college level, how the college level can actually help your students. Um, so it'll be an awesome opportunity. 
I'll be sending out an email by tomorrow with the links for the next registrations and also the play versus sign up link. Send that to your high school athletic directors, send that to your high school teachers who may be interested um, in running the esports program. It's a great time to start gauging interest to see who your esports coaches will be in high school. So I encourage you guys to go that route. Again, thank you guys so much for attending, and we will see you next Thursday at 11 a.m. Have a wonderful day and stay safe out there. Bye-bye.